four and a half years on from release of Anno 1800, new players are still discovering this amazingly fun resource management city building game. However, a lot of new players do struggle with a lot of issues that they have never run into before if they've not played the series in the past or just come into the game and not sure what to do. So here are five things that I think new players are still struggling with and making mistakes on that might help you if you are new to the game or just having a bit of trouble getting started. So let's get started with number one. Right out the gate, a lot of players just click on normal difficulty when they're starting a new sandbox or campaign and go with it. That is the first mistake. And honestly, it's an easy mistake to make because why would normal difficulty be that challenging? Unfortunately, it is. Uh, many players will know that normal difficulty includes Beryl Omara. Now, I love Beryl. I think she's a very easy, medium difficulty AI to play against. However, new players absolutely struggle with her. Beryl is affectionately named the noob killer. She is fairly aggressive for a medium difficulty AI. She loves to buy out the shares on your island. She quickly builds up a large fleet and she expands really, really quickly. She'll also expand to other regions before you do, which is something that the one star AIs, which on normal difficulty, you play against Ching and Willy as well. Those are both one stars. They don't expand to other regions and they typically will ask before settling another island. Beryl, however, does not. She will go ahead and do her own thing regardless of your progress. Now, for a new player to Anno 1800, it's really, really challenging. There's a lot of mechanics in this game. There's a lot to wrap your head around. And having to deal with a very aggressive AI that is going to run around grabbing up all the islands before you can probably declare war on you pretty quick because you're not going to know how to deal with diplomacy and how to keep her happy and everything else because you're not familiar with those systems yet. It's just really not good. So my suggestion is to start on custom difficulty settings. Custom difficulty, unfortunately, is listed at the very end after expert, and you kind of have to scroll over to it depending on the size of your screen. So you might not even see custom difficulty. So that is my advice. Click on that custom difficulty. Use normal as the preset, and then go in and remove barrel. Keep Ching, keep Willy if you want, they're perfectly fine. Keep the pirates if you want to take them out if you want. Again, pirates can be a little challenging to deal with for newer players, but definitely take out Barrel Omara. Leave all the other settings the same. I think everything else on normal is perfectly fine. It's really just a barrel that's the problem. If you really want a simple game, choose normal, but then remove Ching and Willy and put in Benta Jorgensen. I always suggest playing with at least one AI. It is nice to have some extra income from quests and gifts from them. So play at least with one AI. Benta is really, really good. It's, it's almost impossible to make her upset with you. It's like you have to go out of your way to make her mad. So play with her, play with Benta or Ching or Willy, just don't play with Barrel if you are starting out with this game for the first time and not sure what to do. Next up on my list is a lot of new players expand too fast, honestly. Uh, they start slapping down everything they possibly can. They are expanding way too quickly, building way too much stuff that they don't really need or they're not sure what they need, so they're just building everything. Now. Yes, that's not a bad idea to go ahead and build everything and see how it all works together, but you need to know how it all works together. I see some people, they'll put down 10 fisheries, but they only need a consumption of maybe two fisheries, but they'll put down 10 because they are, quote, future-proofing. It's not really how it works. It doesn't really work well that way. Uh, that's just wasted maintenance is all that is. All you're doing is wasting maintenance. Early on, your income is going to be really tight, so build only what you need as you expand your cities. Conversely of that, a lot of people don't expand fast enough in that they don't build enough residents. They build just enough residents to have their workforce at zero at all times, so they keep a zero workforce balance. Uh, but that doesn't always mean that you're going to be making an income and then they're losing money. 
So keep an eye on your consumption and production in the statistics screen. Keep those residents going, but don't expand so fast that you get yourself overwhelmed with so many things. And remember my piece of advice that I always give people, and it's one that some people just absolutely cringe at, is don't build steelworks. Don't build steelworks, don't build weapons factories, especially as a newer player. Uh, they take so much workforce. They're very expensive to maintain. All you need is about 30 steel beams to get from workers to artisans. Just go buy those from Archie. Archie sells steel beams. Go buy up about 30 steel beams. Use those to get yourself to artisan and start producing rum in the new world. Start producing an income that can sustain something like the steel works. So just a little tip right there. Coming up in the middle of the pack is worrying about layouts. A lot of players worry too much about the layout of their cities early on. Uh, recently, there was someone I was talking to that was worrying about their layout in the worker phase. They couldn't even get past workers in the game. They had never got past workers because all they could be concerned about was, is this layout perfect? Is this layout good? Is my layout okay? They had like 500 population, that's it. Don't worry about layouts that early, guys. Worry about layouts starting around engineer is when you really start to have to think about your layouts and everything because you have to incorporate train tracks. Now, again, as a new player, you're not going to know that, but don't stress about it. There is, as long as you're playing on at least normal difficulty and advanced difficulty, if you're up to that stage, you can move buildings around. Nowadays, we have a mass move tool where you just click and drag and move stuff all at once. Don't worry about your layouts right now. Focus on getting things built, getting your people supplied, getting an income. There is so many things to build in this game that you have not unlocked yet. So don't fret about the layout of everything. You can adjust that. So don't worry about the layout move things around later on you're most likely going to move just about anything you place in the first three tiers of the game anyways because it's not going to stay where you place it slap it down worry about how pretty it looks later coming up at number four we have enabling all the dlcs right out the gate now yes you bought and paid for all of those dlcs with your hard-earned money and you want to play with them however dlc in this game doesn't just add on more mechanics it greatly expands the game with new regions more populations you have to take care of more stuff you have to juggle everywhere and it can be very very overwhelming if you're playing against two or three star ai they will go to those regions before you do as well if you're interested in what the triggers for ai going to other regions are uh, there is a link up in the top right at the moment as well as it will be down in the description of this video showing the triggers for ai going to other regions so you'll know what those are but playing with all the DLCs right out the gate can be very overwhelming for new players. Now, there's a couple of DLCs that I would say you probably could go ahead and enable from the get-go because they don't throw things at you and complicate the game. Uh, that would be Bright Harvest and Seeds of Change. Those two DLCs, Bright Harvest is from Season 2 and... And Seeds of Change is from Season 4. Those two DLCs add on new mechanics for mostly for farming. And it's they have a nice progression to them where you progress into using the content. So it makes a lot of sense. So those two DLCs, I think, are perfectly fine to go ahead and use from the get-go. I would say all the other DLCs... Just keep them disabled. Go get a playthrough of the game. Just play through the campaign, maybe. Get a feel for the game. Get comfortable with things. Then start adding your DLC in. It's very, very common to see people all the time saying, I just started playing. I have all the DLCs and I'm completely overwhelmed. And the most common piece of advice for that is start over. Disable the DLCs. Definitely what I suggest doing. And last but not least, we're talking about starting over, and that's one thing that a lot of new players don't do enough of, and that's start over. This game is not a sprint, it's a marathon. It's going to take you a long time to get comfortable with all the mechanics, learn everything there is to learn. 
Starting over is one of the biggest things that's going to help you. You can take everything that you've learned through that current playthrough that you're on, all the mistakes you made, all the things you learned about how to fix those mistakes, and start over fresh and learn to do it better every time. No, no one started this game knowing everything. We all started over dozens of times until we learned the rhythm of the game and how it functions. It takes time to learn Anno 1800, but once you do, you'll find it can be very, very rewarding and very, very simple, really, at the end of the day on how all the mechanics work. So don't be afraid to hit that back to title and start a new game. It's not going to be the end of the world. You'll be able to get back to those artisans and engineers that you have finally worked your way up to. And every time you do it, you're going to find that you can do it a little bit faster every single time, which is going to make you feel even better about your gameplay. So that is it, guys. That's five things that I've noticed over the last few years of playing this game and being part of the community that new players still struggle with and have problems getting past in the game. I have a ton of guides and other content for Anno 1800 here on the channel. If you're interested, be sure to subscribe for more and check out all the different playlists. There are a couple coming up at the end of the video that I might recommend for you to watch if you are interested in that. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my supporters on Patreon as well as here on the channel. If you want to support me, be sure to check out those links down below. I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Mm -hmm.